welcome back. On this episode, we're going to make a transmission tunnel using an English wheel. We're going to start with a flat piece of metal. I already started bending it. I got it all marked out already. I took some pictures of me marking it out and kind of what I did. So I'll attach those pictures into this video to give a good idea. Let's go look at the car that we're doing the transmission tunnel on. So you can see what we're kind of working with and what the end goal is going to be. Anyone that follows any of my other videos, there's the uh, sidekick that I was working on. I got it all painted and everything a few months ago, and it's working good. And here is the transmission tunnel that we're redoing. We're doing it all front to back, all in one solid piece. And then once we get that done, we're going to start redoing the floor because as you can tell, there is not much left to this floor. This transmission tunnel is for a 86 Parisian. The body itself isn't too bad. It's really more so the underside and the floor. I got the doors and everything for it. So I've already marked out that top roll. And instead of rolling it out, I have the other side marked as well, which we're going to start rolling that pretty soon. And then I marked this side out just to be easy for me to get my measurements from the edge. But I remarked it on the back side because I have to roll it up after to get it to meet to where the floor is supposed to be. I'm using my English wheel. I'm using a one radius die on the bottom and I'm using the uh, rubber band on the wheel to, so I can keep a uh, flat radius on the top because I want the transmission to be flat other than a few spots I'm going to have to pick it up a little bit and I'm probably going to end up using my planishing hammer to get to roll up. So yeah, we're, we're going to continue on and uh, we're going to keep rolling. So the biggest thing, you just want to kind of work it one end to the other with it being such a big panel. Just kind of work one side, work the middle, and then I go to the other side and hold the panel. So I just work her back and forth like this. And it makes a very nice controlled radius. It doesn't get away from you that much. It's pretty good actually. One of the reasons I waited till I started this to start the video is just so the panel's not so floppy and it's just easier to control it and uh, it's not making as much noise. So when it's floppy, it kind of makes some noise and then it's hard to hear any audio. As I go, I'm trying to keep my line in the center of the wheel, and then I kind of roll it over like that to keep the roll going to the angle I want. This is one of those things you don't want to rush it. So it is kind of tedious, you don't want to have to start from scratch again. But if I weren't using that rubber band on this wheel, this whole panel would want to start arcing like this as well as like this. So we only want the radius in this direction. So that's why we're using the rubber band. Because that keeps this plane nice and flat and doesn't distort it at all. So if we had the rubber band off, we'd be getting radius in this direction as well. Not as much as in this direction, but we'd still be getting some radius and we don't want that in this case. There will be some parts where we're going to want to have radius in both directions and we'll take the rubber band off when we need to.
So as you can see, we're trying to get some shape to it and some rigidity. We're gonna add more radius up here now. I was just shaping the uh, English wheel too much. So I'm gonna go back up to here and I'm gonna keep going. But as you can see, I have a nice shape started and it's looking really good. When I do this, I like to wear gloves just because it's all the sharp edges and everything. I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit more.
So as you can see, we're starting to get some really nice shape to it. Right now it's almost perfectly flat all the way across the top. Put the uh, straight edge on it. So with the straight edge on it, you can see it's almost perfect. We got a bit of a ridge here, which right around here we actually want to kick this whole part up a little bit. And we'll do that by stretching this area here and up into here, and that will help to give it a little roll up. But it's uh, nice and flat the way we want it. I need a little more down kick in this area here to suck this in more like this. But we're trying to get some really, really nice shape to it, which is pretty awesome. And as you can see, it's nice and rigid too. That's starting to look pretty good up here is where the transmission is and then down in here is going towards the rear axle and then we're gonna have a, it's gonna bubble out here a little bit after where it goes into the floor and then on the other side this is what we'll be seeing on the inside so it's looking really 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 good All right, so I got the transmission tunnel installed in the car now. So I still need to clean up my welds and that kind of stuff. And I did some bead rolls in the flat part to give a little more strength. I wasn't able to fit the whole tunnel up from underneath. I would have had to pull the transmission and the exhaust and all that kind of stuff. So I decided to cut it. But I left, when I made it, I made it... Uh, couple inches longer on each side so I'd have room to do the finishing in and and fit it nice nice into the existing uh, body so I did not much of an overlap but about an inch and a half of overlap and I was able to uh, do my kick up that I was talking about I tried using the uh, my plunging hammer but the throat wasn't big enough and the hammer wasn't powerful enough to stretch the metal the way I wanted to stretch it so it's just easier for me to cut it and it's still just as strong with it with that overlap and that double weld. So it's coming along pretty good. I still have a few more sections of floor to do. And then I need to uh, cut all the bad stuff out of this and uh, reshape that still as well. Oh, and up in the uh, on the front side of the tunnel, right in uh, here. I uh, I changed the shape of it a little bit. I added an extra bulge to give myself about an extra inch and a half or so inside. So if I have to, ever have to remove the transmission lines, I have a little bit more working room to uh, work with. So I just thought I'd plan ahead because I don't plan on getting rid of this anytime soon. So there'd be a good chance I'll have to remove the transmission lines sometime in the future. And this will make it a little bit easier for me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button and click me out on Clark, check me out on Clark Garage on Instagram. Have a great night.